If you're watching this video, most likely you have purchased or are thinking about purchasing the Captain's Desk and Chair Kit from Bentley House Minis. This is a mat board and paper kit that comes with a desk and a matching chair. It has drawers that open, it comes with laser cut details that you can add to the side, and 3D printed legs. The chair is made to match the desk and is also very easy to put together with pre-laser cut pieces. This 17th century inspired set could be perfect for any old world room you're trying to put together. When you open your kit, you will see that you have two large sheets of mat board that are laser cut. These pieces create the body of the desk. You have one smaller piece of mat board which creates the chair, and one piece of cardstock that has the details for both the desk and the chair. You will also receive an accessory bag which has a cleaning cotton round, two toothpicks, and the 3D printed legs. Anytime you are instructed to remove a piece from the sheet, you need to cut it carefully with a sharp craft knife and then clean the edges with the cotton round that was provided in your accessory bag. To begin assembly, we're going to glue the two pieces marked A together. And every time you glue together a piece to make a double thickness, make sure to put it underneath something heavy or clamp it so that it dries flat. We're also going to glue the two pieces marked B together. You can either sandwich the engraved letter on the inside or it can be on the outside. It will be covered up later. You're now going to remove two pieces marked C, two pieces marked D, two F pieces, two FB pieces, and four pieces marked FC. Please take note that your C pieces may look a little bit different from this one and I will explain that later in the video. To start, we're going to begin with the FB and FC pieces. You need to add some glue to the edge of FC and glue it just underneath the engraved lines on FB. You should have two pieces glued to each FB piece, and once you're done, they will look like this. Now we're going to glue these on to piece A in this order, starting with piece D. Add some glue to one of the short edges of piece D and glue it to the face of piece A so that it looks like this. Next we're going to move on to piece F. Add some glue to the top and side edge of this piece. It's going to go just underneath piece D, which we previously glued, and onto the edge face of piece A. This is how it should look once it's attached. Moving on to piece C, if you find that there are any holes that are still plugged with laser cut pieces, make sure to carefully remove those with your X-Acto knife. Your PC will look like this. It had to be changed for 3D printing purposes, and I just didn't have the time to re-record everything, so I am using the previous looking piece C, but it should work the same. Glue PC just underneath piece F and on the bottom face of piece A as shown. All of these engraved letters are going to be facing inside this cavity space. Finally, glue piece FB on the inside between piece D and piece C so that it closes up this space. Do the exact same on the other side, except it's going to be mirrored. Now remove two pieces marked E, two Q pieces, and two P pieces. As you will notice, the E pieces are mirrored. You're going to take piece Q and glue it just underneath the top opening on piece E. Make sure you're gluing these on the side of piece E that has the engraved letter. Glue piece P just underneath the lower opening of piece E so that it looks like this once you're done. Do the exact same thing to the other piece E. It will end up being a mirrored image. These are going to be the pieces that close the front of your desk and also create the supports for your drawers. To insert these, make sure you are putting them in the side where the angle matches up. Make sure that the larger pieces that are glued onto the back of piece E slide on top of the interior supports. This is going to make sure that they go in straight and make good drawer supports once everything is glued. I highly suggest dry fitting these pieces first to make sure you know exactly how they need to go in. This will also let you know where you need to put your glue so that everything stays in place once you put it inside. 
I also suggest adding glue to the edges that are going to touch pieces FC on the inside, making sure that they stay in place. This is easily done by using the back of a paintbrush or a pin so that you can push pieces P and Q down flat, making sure they are resting on top of pieces FC. This will ensure that you have a flat place for your drawers to rest in the future. Now we can glue the desk body that we just constructed to pieces B, which we previously glued together. Just add glue to the top of pieces D and then center it with the desktop facing down so you can make sure you get it in the best position as possible. I suggest adding weights as it dries so everything stays flat. While that's drying, we can work on the drawers. These two groups of pieces will make the two top drawers for the desk. For the first drawer, I am starting with piece N1. I am going to glue it centered on the top, back, part of piece M so that I have the angle side on the left. I'm going to take a piece O and glue it on one side, which will kind of be glued at an angle because of the shape, and that's fine. And then I'm going to glue the other piece O on the other side, and it will be glued more straight up and down. I am constructing my drawer so that all the engraved letters are on the outside, but you can also do them on the inside. Just make sure you are doing them all the same way. So since I am doing all of my engraved letters on the outside, that means my H1 engraving is going to be on the outside as well. I'm going to add glue to the front open area of the drawer and then glue it to the back of H1 so that it is centered. Once it's finished, this is what it looks like. All of my engraved letters are on the outside. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the second drawer using the H2 and N2, and then I'm following the exact same steps for the lower set of drawers. I'm using piece K1, gluing it on the top, centering it at the back of piece J. I'm adding two pieces marked L on either side. One of them will be glued at a diagonal. And then I am going to be using piece G1 with the engraved letter out, just like all the other engraved letters. And then I glue the drawer construction to the back of G1 so that it is centered. And that is how I'm going to create both of my lower drawers, just like I did my upper drawers. They're just a slightly different shape. Then I'm going to dry fit and make sure they all work in place. Now we can move forward to some of the trim pieces. I'm going to cut out piece I, two W's, and two pieces marked V. I spans all the way across the desk above the drawers. Make sure to add glue to both sides and underneath the desk to hold that piece in place. Make sure to glue it so that the I engraved letter is hidden once it's attached. The W pieces are going to go on the inside edge of the desk. Make sure to line it up with the bottom edge of the desk and glue it so that the engraved letter is hidden once it's attached. V does have an angle on one side, so make sure you find the angle that matches up with the side of the desk and glue it so that the V is hidden once it's attached. You will notice that both I and V stick out along the edge of each side just a little bit. That is okay because later we will add other trim pieces that will match up with those. For now, we can move on to adding some cardstock detail. Make sure to cut out all the pieces that you see on screen. These larger pieces are going to go on either side of the desk. The easiest way I have found to add these pieces on is by using a thin layer of Mod Podge. This is much easier than trying to add glue to the very thin pieces of cardstock. Add a thin, very even layer of glue and then carefully lay the cardstock detail piece into the glue, trying to line it up as best as you can on the face of the desk. I'm using the back of my fingernail to push all of the bits of paper into the glue to know that I have a good seal. The rest of the pieces will be attached to the front, as you see here. There will be a slight reveal between the two side front pieces and the center. The center piece will go all the way up against the top of the desk underside, and then you will see the reveal. Glue them in place, as you see here. I'm using the same Mod Podge technique for these and using my fingernail to press them into the glue. Make sure to also add the other side of the desk detail like we did before. Remove all the pieces from mat board sheet 2 that are marked R. Not the cardstock, these are mat board pieces. 
These are going to go in the corners. I turned them so that the engraved letter R was hidden once I glued them to the four corners of my cardstock detail piece. This is how it will look once they're in place. For the front part of the desk, you're going to use four pieces marked T that are going to go in the four outside corners. This is going to line up with your side pieces that we just installed that were marked R. Here you can see all four T pieces in the corner. Now we're going to use four U pieces that don't have any angles on them. Those are going to be glued in the center. On the other side of the desk, you're going to use the S pieces just like you used the R pieces previously. Now, if you would like to, you can go and sand any edges that you don't like, making them look a little bit more cohesive. You can also do this to the edge of the desk, any place that you think needs a little bit of smoothing. For the front of the drawers to cover up the engraved letters, I'm going to be using the two cardstock pieces in section H for the H drawers and the two cardstock pieces in section G for the G drawers. Just make sure to center them on the drawer front and it will give a little line of detail, making the drawers look a little bit more fancy. This is how it looks once they're all in place. There is also a large rectangle on the cardstock detail sheet, which can add a little line of detail to the top of your desk. I've decided to cut the corners off just to give it a little bit more interest, but really you can do anything you want. You can use a fancy corner cutter punch if you have one, or you can just leave it plain or you can leave it off altogether. All of the cardstock details are optional. I'm now going to be using pieces marked I, V, and W from the cardstock detail sheet. The pieces that are in the I section go on either side of the I piece that spans the front of the desk. It goes on either side with the angled point of it facing inwards. Then I can add the V pieces, making sure to center them on the V mat board pieces. And then I'm also adding the W pieces on the inside. This just makes them look like they have a little bit more interest or a little bit more carving done to it once it's painted like a wood desk. Now I'm going to be adding the R pieces to one side, the S pieces to the other side of the desk, and then I'm adding the T pieces to the four corners of the front, just like we did the mat board, and then the U pieces to the interior front of the desk. And again, this is just adding that little extra level of detail for that 17th century over the top feel. You can leave these circular areas as they are, or you can add your own pattern, or you can add the rosettes that are added in your cardstock detail piece. Make sure you are using the desk rosettes that are on the desk side of the cardstock paper, not the chair rosettes. You are going to be adding the circle first and then just add each layer as you see it laid out in the piece on top of each other and eventually you will get a rosette that looks like this. You have just enough to do one each for each circle area. These are all optional, of course, and can be switched out for your own ideas. The only thing that should be left in the desk portion of the cardstock sheet are these handles. I am not going to use those until after I paint the desk, so I'm putting them aside. Now we're going to work with the 3D printed feet. I did tell you at the beginning I had to change how I 3D printed them, so I will show you how they look now. In your accessory bag, most likely there will be four sets of two legs, and they are connected by these very thin supports that come from the 3D printer. The best way to remove them is to use something to hold the center 3D printed support parts, and then pull the leg off as gently as you can. Because the supports are printed so thinly, they should come off very clean, leaving no residue behind. However, if you do need to clean it up, you can use a craft blade or a bit of sandpaper to get off any unwanted bits. The legs I just showed you are the updated ones. The previous ones had these pegs that are going in these round holes. They were a little bit too brittle and I wanted them to be stronger and last for years and years. So instead of the peg holes like you saw just now in the video, you will have what looks like a keyhole, which will fit the legs that come in your kit. There's really only one way to put them in, and they're a lot more secure in place. 
You're going to add all eight of your legs to the bottom of your desk, adding glue as you insert them into the holes so that they stay in place. Once your legs are glued in place, make sure to turn your desk over and sit it flat on your worktop. Look underneath to make sure it looks like all the legs are sitting evenly and then let it dry that way so you don't have to worry about any of the legs drying crooked. Now that this is done, we can go ahead and work on the captain's chair because I do suggest painting these at the same time if you want them to match. The pieces you will need to create the chair is the half piece of mat board, which is laser cut, and the rest of the cardstock details minus the handles, which we still need for the desk. To begin, I'm going to be cutting out the chair back pieces that you see right here. There's going to be one with holes and one without. You're also going to cut out the chair seat and the front legs of the chair. Make sure if you have any that have the hole still filled, you pop out that before gluing them together. All of these pieces need to be glued together to create a double thickness for the chair. Make sure to line up the edges as best as you can and put them under something heavy so that they all dry flat. I'm going to do the same thing for the seat and the back of the chair. While those are drying, I'm going to cut out the two spanner pieces that look like this and the top of the back of the chair, which is slightly rounded, which looks like that. It is very important once you start putting the chair together that the holes line up on the inside because you will be inserting a toothpick later on. Take one of the chair spanner pieces and insert it into the tab at the back of the chair, making sure to add glue. It will look like this once it's in place. Do that on both sides. Then you can add glue to the notches on the front set of chair legs. Again, make sure that the holes are facing to the inside of the chair as you are attaching this. You're going to line up the spanner pieces and make sure that the chair looks as even as possible as you set it on your desktop. Add glue to the underside of the chair seat, and now you're going to glue that on top of your chair construction carefully making sure not to push down too hard on the chair so that everything doesn't just fall apart. I'm looking at the bottom to make sure everything is centered and then I'm going to let that dry really well before I do too much with the chair. Next I'm going to add the top part of the chair construction. Make sure to line all your edges up as you attach this piece. You can also lay this flat on your desk and add a weight to it very carefully while it dries. I'm now going to be putting together the arms for the chair. These are optional and not necessary for the strength of the chair. I'm going to be taking two chair support pieces and gluing them together. Each arm is going to have four pieces that are going to be glued together in pairs to create two arm supports per arm. That's the piece that I'm working with right now on screen. I'm also going to glue the arm together itself and allow those to dry. So I started out with six pieces for each arm and then I'm gluing them together so that I get three pieces for each arm. While those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the toothpicks to help support my chair. To give it a little bit more realism, because chairs often the legs go out a little bit, I am going to slightly carefully bend the mat board. I don't wanna bend it too much to where it breaks the mat board. I'm just slightly bending it outward to give it a more realistic look. Once that's done, I can hold my toothpick above the legs and I'm going to mark where the toothpick will slightly insert inside the holes of each leg. I'm going to dry fit it to make sure I like how it fits and then I'm going to cut the other toothpick to the same size. Once I'm happy with that, I can add glue and permanently insert the toothpick and this will help support all four legs of the chair. Now that that's complete, I can go back to my arms. Each arm shape has two notches within it and this is where you can attach the arm supports. The flat side of the arm support is going to face inwards towards the chair seat. Once you add glue and insert the support, this is how it looks. You're going to do this for both supports and they should end up looking exactly the same and they should be perpendicular to the chair arm. This is how it looks once both of them are inserted. 
make sure when you're doing this to the other arm that you are creating a mirrored image of this arm. It is very easy to accidentally flip the arm over and glue it the wrong way. So make sure you are double checking that. Once the arms are dry, you can attach them to the chair. It's very easy to attach these. The notches just fit on top of the chair and along the side of the back of the chair. Add glue once you're happy with how they look and then allow them to dry in place. During the design process, I made sure that the chair still fits underneath the desk opening even if the arms are attached. Now we're going to add some cardstock details. I'm going to be removing these three longer pieces first. The long curved piece is going to go on the back of the chair. I felt like the back of the chair looked a little bit too plain and I didn't want to add too much extra thickness with mat board, so I added a extra cardstock detail. You can also add this arched piece that will cover up some of the joints of the mat board. And this piece matches the scroll work on the front of the chair, which will also cover up some of those mat board notches if desired. All of these detail pieces, of course, are optional. Now I can focus on doing a little bit of the scroll work and I can kind of decide how much I want to do here. I am going to do just enough so that it looks like the chair matches the desk, but there are many pieces that are left over once I'm finished, and if you want more scroll work, you can do more. I'm adding one of the scroll work eyeball shape pieces, and then I'm adding a rosette in the center, and then I'm adding a smaller rosette above it, and that's about all I'm going to do, but as I said, there's a lot more left over if you want to add more. I am going to go ahead and glue together these two pieces, which are going to help me with the chair upholstery. I am going to put them to the side for now because I will do the upholstery after I paint the chair. Before painting, I am going to sand the edges down just a little bit to help give it a little bit more of a worn look. Now it's time to do some painting and finishing. For the paint, I always suggest acrylic paint, and especially acrylic paint that has not been mixed with water. Any amount of water that you add could cause your paper to warp during the painting process. I'm starting with a very thin coat of brown acrylic paint, and the thin coat is going to kind of seal the paper a little bit. And after that initial coat of paint, I will feel a little bit more comfortable with adding thicker coats or other finishes. I'm making sure to paint the desk separately from the drawers so the drawers don't get painted and stuck in place. After my base coat is done on all my pieces, I'm going to do a very simple dry brush with some cream colored paint. This dry brush technique is basically just a very, very small amount of paint on the brush and all of the raised areas are going to pick up that paint, which means all the details that I've put into this project all the scroll work and all the paper that looks like it's carved wood is going to be brought out by the dry brushing. I'm going to keep the paint job on this pretty simple. However, I do think there's so many different ways that this desk could be painted and made to look really, really cool. This is how it looks with all the dry brushing done. As you can see, it really does bring out some of those details, which would otherwise be lost with all the dark browns. To coat everything in a sealant, I decided to go with a thin layer of gloss coating. I do think it makes it look like this desk and chair have had a fresh coat of furniture wax or furniture polish, and it really does bring out some of those details and just make it look a little bit more expensive or a little bit more upscale. So I really like how that effect came out. Now to finish off this desk, I need to work with the handles. These were handles that were in the cardstock area. And then of course for the chair, I need to do the upholstery, which is going to be this cardstock piece. For the handles, I need two handle pieces to create one handle. I'm going to add glue to one of the pieces and then sandwich the glue on the inside. This helps strengthen the paper and it also helps it stay in place once I start to shape it. Once the pieces are together, I use my fingers to fold it into a U shape on the inside so it does have a distinct handle look. I'm going to do that for all four handles and then let them dry completely. 
Once they're dry, I can go ahead and paint them. My favorite way to paint them is on my hand, especially when the pieces are so small. I'm going to do a base coat of brown, and then I'm going to do a coat of brass on top of that. Now I did think this brass was different enough from my brown paint when I was first painting it, but then I felt once I added them to the desk that they got a little bit lost. So I will be fixing that once they're attached. In order to glue them in place, I'm using a pair of tweezers and a toothpick to apply the glue. I'm putting glue on the two sides of the handle and then centering it on the drawer. I'm doing this for each handle on each drawer and making sure they are completely dry before I add my little gold accent detail. Now I can move on to the upholstery for the chair. This little double thick cardstock piece is going to be my upholstery pattern and I'm going to upholster over it. You can also just glue it straight onto the chair if you wanted it to look like just a thin piece of leather, but I am going to be doing upholstery. I'm using some leftover quilt batting and I'm just going to use one layer to keep my upholstery rather thin. I'm adding glue to the cardstock piece and gluing it onto the quilt batting and then I'm just going to cut it out along the edge with a sharp pair of scissors. Once that's done, I can center it in my fabric and I'm not going to glue that in place just yet. I'm going to use my scissors to cut about a quarter inch around all the sides. And once that's done, I'm going to just clip a few little diagonals in at the corners. This is going to make it easier for me to turn the fabric around the rounded edges. I'm going to first add glue and turn in all the sides, allow that glue to take hold. And then once I'm happy with that, I can add a little bit more glue to the corners and then carefully pull the pieces in that I previously diagonally cut until I have a very neat rounded corner on all four sides of my cushion. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I can go ahead and glue it centered on my chair. This is how my finished kit is looking. Of course, you can create your kit any way you would like to, and if you would like to share it with me, make sure to tag me with hashtag Bentley House Kits on Instagram. If you would like more information on the captain's desk and chair kit, you can go to bentleyhouseminis.com and while you're there, you could check out all the other kits we have available. Thank you for watching this video and happy creating!